Hello, I'm JW. Now, last time we had a look at that consumer unit with the RCBOs in it and that single circuit breaker, but it was fairly difficult to see what was actually going on in there because the actual circuit wiring was incredibly untidy and all sort of stuffed in there in any old fashion. So what we've got here is an actual RCBO just on its own, and it's a Hager one, the same as we saw in that consumer unit which was actually installed. So have a close look at this, and also how this actually fits into a typical consumer unit. So here is the sample device, and so this is a Hago one, as shown in that previous consumer unit. This one has actually been used and taken out of an installation, but nevertheless it's still perfectly fine. And these essentially are circuit breakers, which in this case is really the bottom half of the device, and that's what reacts to short circuits or overloads. And it's got the RCD functionality built into the top, and that's the part which monitors the current on the line and the neutral, and then we'll trip the device if there's any imbalance detected, and in this case an imbalance of 30 milliamps or more. Now have a look on the front of the device, and you see it's got the markings really for both of the components there. We've got the rating here which is a type B and 32, so it's 32 amps in this case, and that refers to the circuit breaker part, so essentially it's just a normal 32 amp circuit breaker. And then on the other side here we've actually got the tripping current which is shown as I delta N, and that's uh, 0.03 amps or 30 milliamps in this case. So we've got the two functions uh, built in there, and again the lever on the front here to uh, switch on and off, and the little window with the red and green indications, and then the, uh, on this case, incredibly small test button there that only tests the RCD functionality. So in terms of the uh, actual arrangement, it literally is just those two devices combined into a single unit. Now connections on this one we've got at the bottom here, this is where the line input would go, and uh, that's just the uh, fixing screw there, and essentially the bus bar peg would just go into this hole, the screw tightened up and then it just uh, pulled onto that in the normal fashion. So that's exactly the same connection as your normal circuit breaker. And the neutral at the top here is on this black lead, and this is purely for the RCD component, as again, it needs to monitor the current in both the line and the neutral. So we've got this uh, black flying lead coming out of here, and this is what would connect to the neutral bar on the consumer unit. So that's basically the uh, neutral in, if you want to consider it like that. And then the circuit wiring, we've got on the front here the line out, and also the neutral out as well. So the two connections there on the top are separate. So you've got line in here, neutral in on the black wire in this case, and then the uh, line and neutral out for the two terminals at the top. Now this, as in common with most uh, devices like this, only switches in line. The neutral is basically a straight-through connector. It's only placed through here so it can monitor the current passing through. There's no actual switch within the neutral. You can get double pole ones which switch the neutral as well, but generally they're wider devices and sort of two modules wide. They also cost more and of course are not as used as often as these. Now the uh, white lead here, and unfortunately this has been actually chopped off, so it's uh, ridiculously short, but uh, this is actually a functional earth connection, and uh, of course it goes to the earthing bar. Now the exact function of these seems to vary depending on which manufacturer you contact, and in fact some RCBOs don't actually have this connection at all, but uh, it's primarily there for either sensing if there's a fault with the earth in the installation, and of course, if that uh, is connected there, it's not actually carrying any current, it's just purely there to detect whether the earth is connected. Or in some cases, if, say, the neutral connection to the installation was broken, because the RCD part in this is all electronic, then there wouldn't actually be any power to actually run the electronics and the device wouldn't trip. So the functional earth connection here is uh, provided so that uh, even if the neutral was damaged or broken, you could possibly still have a small current to power the electronics and then trip the device if such a thing occurred. So it's uh, purely there, so it's a functional connection. It's not actually uh, used for anything else other than just to either sense that the earth is still there, or compare between the uh, earth and the neutral to see if there's a fault on one or the other. So how does this thing fit into a typical consumer unit? Well, here's a typical consumer unit, which we've seen before. This is a different make, but uh, doesn't actually matter for the uh, purposes of this one. So uh, the uh, RCBO here, is essentially the RCD, which in this case is a big two-module device, and a circuit breaker, all combined into the same thing. 
and uh, the advantage then is that uh, with this particular design if this RCD goes off then it's going to disconnect all three of these circuits whereas if you had a whole row of these if this goes off it only disconnects the one circuit that it's actually connected to because it's far more convenient because then you know exactly which circuit the fault is on and of course it only disconnects that one circuit where the rest of the installation is unaffected. The problem with these is of course they are considerably more expensive than this kind of El Cheapo style of uh, twin RCD unit. Now this is inside that cheap consumer unit and uh, of course this is set up with the uh, two RCDs and all the uh, adjustable horrible wiring there. So uh, to show you how an RCBO would fit in we first want you to get rid of most of this stuff. So having got rid of all that junk in there we're now left with what is basically a main switch consumer unit. So it's an empty box and all we've got inside is the main switch and a single wire from the neutral here to the neutral bar up the top there. And of course your incoming uh, main supply will be here through the switch, neutral out here to the neutral bar and then line out here which will go to the various devices. And of course you can still fit normal circuit breakers in here such as uh, these ones and then your bus power will just fit in the bottom there to connect the power in, circuit wiring at the top here and in the case of the normal circuit breaker the neutrals will just connect to the neutral bar here at the top right. However in the case of the RCBO because this has the RCD functionality built in it needs to monitor both the line and the neutral so again it just fits onto the rail in the same fashion but uh, as well as the uh, line bus bar connecting here in the bottom just in the same way as the other devices we've also actually got this additional lead here which is for the neutral so that is what connects to the top here in the neutral bar so this just fits on the rail here And then your circuit wiring goes in the top here on the line and neutral holes in the actual device. So none of the circuit wiring actually attaches to the neutral bar. It's purely only the flying lead from the RCBO which goes over there. And just as before the line bus bar just slots into the bottom here so connects across to all of the devices. So in this particular case then the current path is the line in here through the main switch onto the bus bar here into the bottom of the device here, through the device on the line out which goes to your circuits for whatever purpose. That returns via the neutral into the device here. Again that's going through a sense coil inside. Back on the flying lead here up to the neutral bar, back from the neutral into the bottom through the main switch and then here's your incoming neutral connection here. And of course being AC the current reverses direction at 50 hertz. And of course you can have as many of these devices in here as will fit, just now you'll see a longer bar. This is just a short piece here for demonstration purposes. And I'll just point out that yeah, this is a Hager one and this uh, is not a Hager consumer unit but again this is just a demonstration. Normally would not mix uh, manufactured devices but it just happens to be uh, what's available at the time. So really quite simple to fit. The only disadvantage is that these are generally taller so there's obviously less space at the top here to fit the circuit wiring but uh, generally units designed for these are decent height so you've still got a reasonable gap at the top there. It certainly can be a problem on older ones where they're obviously shorter in the height of the box so you end up with this basically shoved up against the top of the casing and you can't get the wires in. But uh, other than that pretty much uh, the same kind of arrangement to wire in. Just remember that the neutrals go into the actual device not to the uh, neutral bar at the top. And it is possible to uh, combine these with having a separate RCD in the box as well. And unfortunately that's where all of this horrible untidy wiring comes in. And the thing to remember then is that uh, all of the RCBOs go to the main neutral bar here and each RCD will then require its own neutral at the top here. So you'd have to add in extra neutral bars. If you're going to put say two in you'd have to have another two neutral bars here. One for each because it's important that the current is kept separate as each one has to monitor the current flowing through for the devices it's covering only and if not it's simply going to trip and uh, go off every time you attempt to switch anything on. Now the other thing to remember is that if it has one of these functional earthing leads here which is either white or cream colour then you just need to connect these over to the earthing bar here at the top. 
Unfortunately, this one, this has been uh, cut off as it's been removed from an old installation that uh, normally they're plenty long enough to reach to the bar over there. And uh, one other thing to be aware of on these is that these uh, RCBOs and the leads they're supplied with generally have the end either like this one, which has actually been uh, sort of welded into a solid piece, or in some cases have a uh, solid pin crimped over that. And it's important to keep that on there when you're actually inserting it into the top here. It does mean you can actually end up with quite a lot of spare wire. And if you don't, if you just cut this off, you'll find that the wires inside are generally very finely stranded. And if you tend to put them in here, then there can be issues with this not actually gripping the wire correctly. And bearing in mind, this is carrying the full load current for whatever circuit it's connected to. So in this case, a 32 amp device. So it is important that this makes a good connection at the top here. So I say this one is actually some kind of uh, welded arrangement, or others have, say, pins on like that. So although it may be tempting to cut the wires off and just make them uh, sort of nice and neat and tidy, then it can result in problems with that very fine stranded wire going into the screwed connection. And if you do cut it off, of course, you can always just crimp on a uh, pin on the end there, which of course avoids the problem. So look at RCBOs and how they fit into a typical consumer unit. And it's just the circuit breaker part with the overload and short circuit functionality with the RCD as in the sensing the difference between line and neutral added into the top. Now these things are certainly better than having those El Cheapo consumer units with the two RCDs in because if you've got a whole load of these, if any kind of fault occurs, it's only going to trip off the individual circuit and the rest of the installation stays unaffected. But of course the disadvantage is these are considerably more expensive and say on a 10-way consumer unit, just these 10 of these alone is going to be several hundred pounds, whereas you can get your cheapomatic consumer unit with two RCDs in from some DIY shed for less than 100 pounds. But on the other hand, how often are you going to be replacing your consumer unit or rewiring your house? So it's certainly probably worth considering spending the relatively small amount of extra money to have all of these rather than the cheapomatic version. But of course, some people just go for the cheapest option anyway, so no wonder those things are so popular. But uh, until next time, thanks for watching.